Hello everyone, welcome to Option Gate. This is your host Vivek Somani. I am an option trader by passion and a full-time software executive by profession. If you want to learn how to generate consistent monthly income trading options while working full-time in your day job, then join me in this journey. All right friends, today on our menu is the term called buying power. So in this session, we will cover everything that you need to know about buying power. To become a successful option trader all right so what's on the agenda first we'll define what is buying power and then we'll also talk about what is meant by buying power reduction bpr then we'll see what's the impact on the buying power when you're doing a long option trades means when you're buying an option trade how does it impact buying power or when you're selling options how does that impact buying power now within selling, you could do a naked uh, options or you could do a spreads. So we'll see the impact of each type of trade on the buying power. All right, ready to dive in? So let's move on. First one, buying power. Buying power represents the power or ability of your account to further transact in shares or option trades. For example, if you have $50,000 in your account and you have not bought any sh shares or you have not had any option trades, the current buying power of your account is $50,000. For simplicity, I am not considering a margin account but just a cash account right now. If you have a margin account, you will just have the multiple of portfolio margin you have with your broker. But the concept is still the same. Buying power will represent the power or the ability of your account to make trades. As simple as that. Buying power reduction means how much buying power has been reduced by the trade that you just did. I.e. this is the amount of the buying power consumed by a particular trade. Let's take an example. I had $50,000 in my portfolio and now I am buying a stock which is valued at $20 and I'm buying 100 shares. So the BPR or the buying power reduction from that trade is 20 into 100 is equal to 2000. So in a trader, trader lingo, when we talk about BPR, we talk in a way saying, hey, this is an option trade and the BPR on this trade is $2000. reduce so but now the question comes is why would brokers reduce the buying power it is because by reducing the buying power power brokers are keeping aside or setting aside the money so that you can fulfill your contractual obligations in the event if the trade goes completely against you for example let's say you sold a put as you sold a put option on a stock at a strike price of 50 you sold one contract in that case the broker could set aside five thousand dollars or could reduce five thousand dollars from your buying power so that if stock does not cooperate and becomes zero you will be put the stock at fifty dollars so you will have to buy the stock at fifty dollars and you will have to buy 100 shares so broker will set aside five thousand dollars so that you can fulfill your contractual obligation of buying 100 shares at 50 dollars buying power reduction gives a way for brokers to protect themselves in case of eventual loss let's look at how the buying power reduction happens for stock long stock buying power is constant let's say if you bought a stock going back to our previous example you had 50,000 in your portfolio, let's say you bought a stock worth $5,000. So remaining buying power is 45,000. Now that stock value may go up or down, does not matter. Your buying power is still $45,000 because you bought a stock. But let's say if you short sell a stock, you short a stock. In that case, the buying power will change in the, with the change in the stock price. For example, you had a $50,000 of your uh, portfolio 
Let's say you short sell a stock at $50. Broker may block $5,000, but let's say the stock moves higher, they will have to eventually block little more money because remember, this is a short sale. You will have to buy the stock from the market to close this trade. So, buy, so the broker will always try to hold enough money to enable you to buy the stock at a market price. So if the stock value keeps on changing in the market, so be your available buying power will change. Let's look at how it happens for option trades. For long option trades means you are buying an option. Then the buying power is con constant throughout the option expiration period because you, when you buy an option, your maximum loss is amount of the money that you already spent. Broker don't have to hold any more money from your account to cover up for the maximum loss because you already spent that money when you bought an option and that is your maximum loss. So whatever remaining money is left in your portfolio throughout the expiration cycle of that option, that money is not going to change. The buying power is not going to change. But if you are a short option trades, means if you are selling options, if you are selling a naked options, then the buying power will vary with the change in underlying stock price. What we discussed in the short selling of stock, same concept apply to naked option selling. Because if the stock moves up or down, the value of your naked option will change and the broker will hold enough amount to cover up in case there are, in case you have to uh, close your trade. So since the value keeps on changing, the amount of money that broker will hold will keep on changing and hence the available, available buying power also will keep on changing. But in case of a vertical spreads, this is called defined risk trades. In vertical spreads, the buying power does not change throughout the option expiration period. Why? Because the maximum risk is already defined. Let's say we are putting up a, a call spread. That means you sold a call of a stock at $100 and you bought a call of the same stock at $105. In this case, your maximum risk does not matter where the stock goes. Stock would go to $150 also, but your maximum risk is equal to $105 minus $100, which is $5. $5 per share means $500 for 100 shares in one contract. So your maximum risk is $500. So if you do this vertical uh, call spread, brokerage firm will hold $500 and, as, as a buying power reduction and does not matter where the stock may go. Stock may go to 120, 130, 200. Brokerage will, will hold only $500 from your account because that is your maximum loss. So once you put in a vertical spread, the remaining buying power stay constant throughout the expiration period of that vertical spread. It does not change. In naked options, it will change with the change in underlying stock price. I hope that makes it clear. Now the question is, why is understanding of buying power reduction important as an option sellers? It is important because we should know how much buying power have we already consumed out of the total available buying power. Like we have discussed in our other video of cardinal rules for option selling, we should only utilize the maximum of 50 to 60% of available buying power in option trading. Rest should be kept in cash so that we can ride the ups and downs of the market or the burst in volatility and avoid margin calls from broker. You need to know how much of the buying power you are consuming make sure that you are not consumed 80, 90% of the available buying power. Limit your trades so that you consume maybe 50 to 60% of the available buying power and keep the rest of the money handy to ride the downturns in the market. As an option sellers, it is important for us to understand the buying power and the buying power availability, buying power reduction. All right, takeaways. Buying power reduction varies for undefined risk profile trades. We talked about naked uh, options, which is undefined risk. We talked about in the case of a stock, short selling is undefined risk. So in both the cases, the buying power reduction will vary or the available buying power will vary throughout the option expiration cycle. 
So as a short option traders, we should keep an eye on available buying power and make sure that we always have enough available buying power so that we can ride the downturns in the market. All right, I hope this helps you. Uh, thank you for your time today. If you have any comments or questions, email it to optiongig at gmail.com. If you liked what you learned, help us spread the word so others can also benefit from it. Thank you very much.